back. I think Jerome has a presentation. Kim, would you join me? Yes, sir. that many have asked where we partnership and pair with other organizations from the outside, some numismatic, some non-numismatic. And this particular one deals with the modern American wisdom and their donation to the ANA College Scholarship Fund. So Jerome, I'll let you. Okay, I am here wearing two hats because yeah, I'm the treasurer of the ANA, but I'm also here representing Camp 7226 of Colorado Springs, which is part of Modern Woodman of America, whose home office is in Rock Island, Illinois. It's a long time insurance beneficiary company, uh, established back in 1883, so it's been around a long time. But uh, our local camp. Uh, investments in property in Colorado Springs and we were getting income from that and the home office thought we were accumulating too much money. So they suggested we do something with the ovary. The local camp uh, decided on a scholarship program <coughs> and we implemented that in 1989 and so we have been operating 26 years. Uh, we served uh, the local school districts in El Paso and Southern County in Colorado. And, and we got to the place this last year where we felt like we were not welcome in the schools because of security uh, considerations which have changed over the last 26 years. And so we thought it is time to do something with our operation. And about the same time, uh, Walter Oscarmecki decided to create, uh, within the ANA, the college scholarship uh, fund. And so in discussion in the Camp 726 uh, Educational Trust, the board decided that uh, the best thing to do is take advantage of this opportunity of the ANA and divest ourselves of the money and give it lock, stock, and barrel to the ANA. So this has been in the works for a year and the ANA approved receiving this money at, uh, in Portland and so at this time I'd like to present to the ANA a check for $163,000 to be used for college scholarships nationwide.
again, this is some of the avenues that we're all looking at. I know the new board is to partnership joining with others. This is what we can do outside of the Hispanic community. So this is very dear to us. This man was part of it as well, Governor Swindley, and I forgot she was well. Moving along, we're looking at approving the National Money Show for 2017, which will be in Orlando, Florida. And we're looking here at motion number seven, which would be a motion by, a second by, for fund United Florida United Numismatists to be named the host club with the 2017 National Money Show. Is there a maker? I have, oh well, I'll look at this side. Just a <laughs> I have a move by Governor Swindling, second by Governor Adkins. Any discussion here from the board? And you all know it's a great city, great opportunity. No further discussions. Boy, you're making it easy on me this last day. I appreciate it. So, call for the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Abstentions? One absent, motion carried. Second, since you've already approved, fine. We need to select a chairperson. Motion by, second by for Cindy Webker to be named as the host chair for the 2017 National Money Show. For those of you, I'm sure you all, oh, no, no, it's this side, guys. I'm going to do this side of this time, okay? <laughs> if not, we'll come over here. I know I have it on this side. But Cindy, of course, has been involved with fun. She runs their convention and has for many years. It's a great choice for us. Is there someone on this side? So moved. So moved. Governor Lyon, is there a second? A second. Governor Ross. <laughs> How are we going to have some fun? Lighten up, guys. Okay. Any further discussion? Any input from the audience? <coughs> now, you all want to go to Florida? Is that okay? We're going to have Cindy do okay. <laughs> Just want to make sure. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? <coughs> Motion carried. Eight and one absent. <coughs> okay, we tabled motion here, item six, motion nine. And then we will go on, each of you as a board member, received a number of committee reports via email that will be read into the record. I have been asked by Joe Bowling to read his introduction and preface for the judging program which he oversaw and I said I would do that live. I hope you've all read the other ones. I, but we will be ending these into the records. It says, Dear Mr. President, enclosed is the report of the judges familiarization and certification seminars that have been conducted since the, his last report of August 2013. The, the seminars were conducted throughout Atlanta, Michigan, and other areas in Central States, as well as our National Money Show and World's Fair of Money Show. In Chicago in 2014, two existing, two existing judges added classes to their certification. A number of new judges were put into service in Portland in that year, which was 2015, and then one additional judging class was added. Overall, my report contains we have seven new judges, and they have received their plaques and certifications. Respectfully submitted, Joe Bowling, Chair. Any discussions on the others to be read into? We have an education report to be read into, I believe. We have the ANA representative program to be read into it. We also have the updated 2015 strategic plan to be read into it. Any board concerns? Come on, guys. Get into a debate here. We'll save it for Jeff, I guess. Okay, I'll entertain a motion to read into the report. Well, well I'll, I'll ask. Yes, sir. What, just so, so we have some discussion, what you say updated strategic plans, what, what uh, could you uh, maybe uh, highlight some of the updates so we have an idea of what you mean by updates? Well, we updated 
On, on the website, we post our strategic plan. It's done by the board each year. Mid-year, we're looking at where we are, and we have accountability. Where, where do we meet these goals in regards to customer service, in regards to our educational mission outreach, in regards to, so these were the updates that were added. The last report was done in Chicago last year, Jeff. Okay. So since then, and Kim and the leadership team have adopted a number of programs, and those are again posted. I'm so long to read here, I'll read them if you wish, for the audience is perfect. No, no, I just want to explain some of the yeah. highlights of, like, when you say updates, like, were there, were there changes or things that would be relevant? That well, for example, we about? set a target date for the 127 years of the numismatist online, and that was delayed a little bit. The original target date was for March, and due to some difficulties with the company and we didn't have a couple of issues available for them to put online that was delayed a little bit so we're just tweaking that strategic plan in that area what's, looking what's at the, customer service i think kim put together a new internal uh, communications policy to try and better our customer service for you the membership so these are some big quick changes that i recall what, it, what is the status on the, the mismatist? I haven't seen that in any of the, any of the uh, updated. It is, I believe it's for October. Uh, we, we're planning to uh, launch it in um, November Sorry. of this year, November of 15. Okay. But that will be another great membership benefit. You now we promised, as I said, there were some glitches into getting all the magazines. A number of the earlier issues that we were missing, we did not want to cut the binding of all our years put together and take out each page. And we were missing a couple that uh, we did not even have. We had individuals donate them to us so we could do that process. But this is something that's been promised, it's done, and it should be, as Kim mentioned, around November 1st. So this will be a great opportunity to read everything from 1891 down, and it's just a great opportunity, great resource value that was added. Does that answer your answer to okay. mine, yeah. Thank okay. you. Any other board questions, Tom? Sam? I do have one question. Okay. Will the formatting allow uh, members to search by keyword through the issues? Say if they wanted to know something about half cents, would it show all the relevant issues through the years and they can choose one specific issue? And yes, the searchable format, if you just put in the word cent, you might have 10,000 pages. So you can narrow it down. Do you want Lincoln cent, Indian cents? So there's search by that. There's also search by author and by time period, 1920s, 30s, 40s, so an author. So to answer your question, yes, that will be in there. Anything else, Sam? Anyone else? <coughs> Did we have, is there a hand up? Well, I just wanted Sorry, to, uh, to also discuss a couple of things that the YN committee has uh, okay. accomplished recently. I think we just heard from uh, the, the scholarship fund that was established through partnership with, with Jerome, Walt, and, and Rod and uh, is now fully funded. Uh, I think that there's a few other things that maybe the membership uh, isn't aware of yet but have been working you know, for so long with the YN and Scout Committee, so diligently headed by Rod Gillis in the Education Department at, uh, at headquarters. And I think that now we have seen with uh, the addition of a couple of, of new staff members to the education department that a lot of the pending items that have been under development for the past several years have actually been launched. I think the, the periodic table of numismatics that's now available at the, the ANA table is one of those really cool achievements of some educational materials that can be used by uh, YNs, teachers, and just general collectors and, and really appreciate it. That took a lot of hard work and it's researched very thoroughly. Uh, I think everybody who has not seen that should take a look at it because it's, it's a really interesting presentation. I think another great benefit that has been long missing from the YN retention strategy is a way for YNs to participate in the annual YN dollar auction at the World's Fair of Money via an online process. And that's actually launching with this convention, which is really fantastic because it's been one of the greatest and most underutilized benefits that the YNs have had uh, for the past several years. And 
I hope that the board and the advisory council and the rest of the ANA staff takes a look at this sort of initiative and this sort of uh, utilization of our new digital platform that we've got and works towards making more of those sorts of uh, products available to our membership, both for retention, recruitment, and uh, just the general service of our membership. I think these are all really wonderful things that have been accomplished by Rod and by the, the YN committee and by the ANA staff headed by Kim. So I, I wanted to throw my appreciation out to that and also let everybody know that they should check those things out, especially those of you who are YNs who are, are watching and are interested in either becoming members, staying members, or utilizing your benefits as a, as a member of the ANA. If I may piggyback on that a little bit too, there's also another program that's been on our bucket list, our educational bucket list for the past two years. And just a few days before this convention opened, we were roughly $5,000 short on putting up what we call the grading game online. Oh, yeah. And thanks to the very generous donation of one of our longtime members and supporters, former board members, Chet Krause, the 5000 needed has been given to us. And so we will be able to start. And Rod Gillis is already developing that in his finalization. So that will be up on the website. But that's geared to all ages, all levels of collector. It's going to be a wonderful addition as well. Any other reports for anyone before we, okay. I will entertain a motion then to enter into the records by, second by, all the oral and written ANA 2013 to 15 committee reports into the official record. Those being the YN committee, the education committee, the strategic plan, help me out. <laughs> I lost a couple. My judging. Yeah, the judging. And the district. Rep. And the district rep program. So that's why I wanted my notes. <laughs> so, are there any further reports from anyone in the audience on a committee that would like to? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the motion here. I need a maker. Move it. <clears throat> Governor Roddinghouse. Second. Governor Swindling. That's uh, Mulvaney. Mulvaney. I'm sorry. That was Governor Mulvaney. I'm sorry, Tom. You didn't raise your hand. I saw him. I saw a hand there. I heard a, heard a voice over there. I'm hearing voices now. It's my voice. I was... <laughs> I'm sorry. Governor Mulvaney, forgive me. Uh, he sounds so young and enthusiastic. Oh, yeah, yeah you're condition. absolutely right. <laughs> yeah. Now we get some discussion. I like this. Okay, any further discussion? I'll call for the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carry. One absent. How was your dad here? Are you, you going to speak to it? I'm, okay. Next, we have. I want to know who's going to speak to it before I get into it. Uh, we have a reasonable collecting board resolution proposal, and I'm Ken Hollenbeck had advanced it through the advisory council. And Tom, I guess you're going to speak to it before we go any further about that particular program that you're. Uh, for those of you who aren't aware. Uh, uh, in Germany, they put in uh, a possibility of very extremely ex restrictive coin collecting law that uh, is a it's protection of cultural heritage law. And unfortunately, numismatics gets wrapped up in that proposal. Uh, and they put some exceedingly restrictive uh, items, such as uh, they had to ascertain the name and address of every vendor, consigner, buyer of the, com of the commission or the commission prepare a description and, and a photographic image suitable to ascertain the identity of the cultural heritage, check the, into the provi provenance of the cultural heritage, and so on and so on. It's an extremely restrictive law that they've proposed in there. So uh, uh, we just wanted to, there's uh, Ursula Kampman, who was unfortunately not able to attend, who uh, writes a, a weekly e-column called uh, Coins Weekly, and uh, She's been kind of spearheading some of this along with uh, Kunker auctions in Germany uh, that they want to, uh, to, re to reduce this down. And uh, it was, this was more just for a resolution to show yeah, that a resolution. We, uh, to help out the Germans and uh, that this is just exceedingly restrictive. And unfortunately, it, it bundles a lot of cultural things and includes coins uh, into there. So. 
I know Scott is very familiar with this, and if you'd like to mention a little bit more about it, I would appreciate that. So. Yeah, I was just going to say, from my perspective, this propo proposed legislation in Germany basically spells out the end of coin collecting and dealing in Germany if it were to be enacted. Basically, any coin, I don't remember the the age, but they're talking about something like 100 years old, 100 years. Ha has to be provenanced in order to be sold. And um, it, yeah, it's, in, it's impossible to proceed because most coins just don't have those provenances that would be needed here. So I think that it's very important for an organization like the ANA to go on record in support of this, um, lest something like this gets enacted in Germany, which is a really major international market for numismatic items and other collectibles, um, and potentially spread to other places as well. So, well, let me okay. open. I have, um, before we can discuss, I need to get a make of the motion, and I have a motion by Governor Roddickhouse. Is there a second from a board member? Second. Second by Governor Lyon. Now we can go on with the discussion that we can evolve the line. Vice President Garrett, you have? Um, you know, I, I have, uh, uh, you know, fully support. And I understand the, the, the impact of things like this, but what uh, I like the board as a, as a group, and we can almost need to kind of decide what, uh, what we, how we address things, because to me, this is not much different than what's going on in Minnesota. And you say, like, changing, um, changing the you know, landscape as you know it. I, uh, I talked to some people in Germany. From, I, I talked to, had some couple of drinks and talked to some of the people from there. A couple of them are thinking about moving to Belgium. But the same thing's happening in Minnesota. Gary could probably say there's dealers probably leaving the state because of their legislation. So I don't know what the line is between what we're allowed to be involved in and what we be able to be involved in. But I just want to point out this is something that's not just you know just particular issue. And going forward, we may have to um, you know think a little bit harder about like you know where we draw that line between that may be lo considered lobbying or maybe considered a, you know the ictus problem or or that kind of thing. So. You know, I'm, I'm I'm in support of this. I think it would be. I mean, it's it's almost so poorly written that it's like so illogical that they, it's like unenforceable. So maybe that's a good thing. But the same thing could be said for what happened in Minnesota. It's so hor horribly written in Minnesota. Like every coin you sell has to like have a weight on it or you know pressure. I mean, it's it's a very very similar problem. So um, I just want to make sure we're not worried just about Germany. We need to worry about what's going on in America. But then that brings up another can of worms of what we're allowed to be involved and not be involved in. So I think it's a, maybe a beginning of a more deep discussion about that, that you know, about legislation and how the ANA addresses those issues. So I'd like to and, just put that on and the and table. Maybe the only difference I might want to point out is that Minnesota law, unfortunately, was passed. So that's trying to be overturned. So right. there's a, you know, it's a little bit different. I understand what you're saying. This is trying to make a statement for the collector part. Well, where were we? And again, you're doing the same thing. Well, that's my I'm point. Sure so where were we? So that's my point. Well, so we were. It, we, you know, we had an opportunity to be involved before it was passed, and we, you know, so you know, yeah, uh, we I mean, did have it, and, and you know, right. So that's yes, yeah, so that's my. It's, so, you know, the, the point is, is like, you know, there's been a. a this, the board has kind of taken an, an attitude that it's ICTA's problem, and we and we don't go don't into those issues. The but then this is um, um, well. I mean, I, I'm, not, know, I'm, I'm concerned. Just, again, I was gonna, no, I'm just concerned that we're we're more worried about what's going on in Germany than in America. So that's my well, point. We're worried about what's going on in the hobby too, and both of them overlap. These are touchy areas. Right. I know. Right. You know, Gary being living there and having to deal with it on a daily basis makes it more sensitive. Right. Too. And it's not just Minnesota. It's but, other it's other places. Well, but Minnesota. we've also reached out from the ancient part, from Greece and from Belgium and other parts, sending our support for the hobby. Would you like to turn all your ancients in? You know, those have been issues too. And there's a, <laughs> and that's what they're, you know, Greece is going to con con confiscate them all and you guys may not be dealing in other coins, but these are issues too, and it is. It's, it's a serious matter. Yeah. Yes, Gary. Yeah, just a quick comment. Um, talking about the Industry Council for Tangible Assets, uh, last year over a thousand bills were introduced in the United States throughout the country uh, with the words coins or precious metals or gold or silver or something like that in the bill. And so ICTA's job is to, to ferret through all of those bills and figure out which ones are important to the industry and the hobby. Uh, and of those over a thousand bills, I think there were 120 some bills that needed attention by ICTA. So it, again, it is a it's a national problem here in the United States, 
and it's a worldwide problem for that matter. And so, as Jeff said, it's something that we really need to think about where, where the ANA is headed in that direction and what we do about it. And I guess I'm very sensitive of us, you know, it could look as, and I know our legal counsel is advised dealing with the loss of our nonprofit. I'm very protective of that. Sure. And we, we don't have any definite lines. I don't want them to come in and say, hey, you're closed down. We're taking it away. We're going to lose that status. And so that's been my stance. So maybe I'm a little more overprotective of our nonprofit. Well, I think status. everybody here is concerned about that. So I don't think that's a question. Well, that, that, that's how much of my concern. This is why I've been trying to juggle this issue along with this as well. It's sure. it's sensitive. Any other board members have concerns? Before I open it to the audience? Any audience concerns? Anybody in the audience would like to address this issue? Press? Yes, Paul? Uh, Step up here, Paul. I'm sorry. I, I'd like to echo what Jeff and, and, and Gary said as well. Uh, there are jurisdictional, jurisdictional issues uh, within the industry and mandates of each of these different organizations. ICTA, uh, to just uh, offer some information, ICTA has a, a lobbying arm that protects their uh, nonprofit status as well, uh, and it's called CERT. Um, I don't know what the dynamics are, but I know that this organization is strong, and I know that uh, cooperation between this organization and that is necessary. Uh, Minnesota hit us over the head. We knew it was gonna happen. And we still let it hit us over the head because we are, as, uh, as a board member of, uh, of ICT for many decades now, uh, we are a reactive organization, ICTA is. This is something that's very serious that's going on in Germany that the rest of the world is going to see. And so it is a threat to our hobby. And so uh, anything that our, the a and can do, whether it's through cooperation with ICTA or other organizations uh, certainly needs to be looked at seriously because what happened in Minnesota can happen to us as a country through legislation like this. And if you don't think that legislators are looking at what's going on in other countries, don't, don't, be, uh, don't be misled by that. So uh, I, I see a, a huge urgency in, in, in making sure that we have not mo monitor but perhaps even uh, participate in whatever ways we legally can. One of the easiest ways for us is through a resolution process to do that, you know. Even with ICTA, we, we, we've done, this is something here for Germany that could be done as well. And, and I agree with that, Mr. President, and, and that's for at least to start to, yeah, to, to make sure that we, uh, that we throw the support of the uh, organization. Uh, all that, all, and the hobbyists, too, they're the the worldwide. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Could you state your name, please, when you... Uh, sure. Um, Life member Bob Corver. Uh, for those of you who don't know, until two years ago... ...White House appointee to the State Department, given with the CIA, and all the issues that have come from the is probably no greater threat to the worldwide collecting community, but very serious threat to the American collecting community. Uh, your resolution will do virtually nothing. It's essential that you make it. It is essential that you support the collecting community in a government forum. It's essential that you support the rights of American collectors. But the resolution itself is not going to change the mind of bureaucrats who frankly think that the collector, because he is collecting pieces of other people's history, and by extension like his own history or her own history, that this is virtually a criminal act, that dealers are a criminal class because they are engaged in this movement of material across state lines, government, international lines, and that this material always rightly belongs to the government of issue, regardless of where it was spent. Uh, at its most extreme, this would be like in a hundred years, the American government demanding all of its hundred dollar bills back that are circulating around the world because it's our cultural patrimony. It ignores all of the economics and all. I could go on for hours. I spent 10 years doing this. Essential that you do pass the resolution, but know that this is an issue that is going to come before you again and again and again. 
and that there is no simple answer because the government bureaucrats are in power and all you have is a little bit of suasion which they will ignore because it doesn't fit their, their particular concept of political correctness. Can I, can I ask you a question? Um, does, the, um, does the Europeans have a, have they formed a group to, like, you know, the United States has ICTA and to you know, try to work toward things. So they, what, what sort of, um, uh, I guess, pushback have they, have they created over there to deal with these kind of things, if any, or and how, can you just give, me, give us some enlightenment on that? Most of that has actually come from deal to uh, organizations. Um, this is in itself a very complicated issue because the initial CPIA is in this country implementing in some fashion certain aspects of the uh, UN decrees. Um, it was decided that having a committee structure to review these concepts, bringing in the viewpoints of the various parties would be a good way to proceed rather than blanket prohibition of the importation of the cultural property of other countries. This would allow, for example, for collectors, and indeed in the CPAA, the initial intent of Congress, as specified, was to exclude coins because of their unusual capacity of traveling internationally. It does not make sense to take a Roman denarii that was minted outside of any concept of Italy, even you know, and not to mention the whole business of what is Italy and, and all those issues, uh, and minted outside of Italy, spent outside of Italy, has spent its entire life as a coin outside of Italy, and to then declare that to be the cultural property of Italy, which properly belongs to the people of Italy. And would you please send it back, thank you, and we prefer it not to be COD delivery. Um, most countries are going to have to deal with this issue, and up to this point, the bureaucrats at the State Department basically are in the business of making treaties. That's what they do. If this administrative structure were located in the Commerce Department, their mindset would be more of establishing a reasonable commerce and also that the real goal of our country in all this legislation is yes to protect the cultural patrimony of other countries, but to do so in a fashion that allows for illicit trade and a trade which, in essence, establishes protection for all the parties, but yet embraces the benefits of capitalism. That used to be what our government and our country was about. In this particular case, that's not true. Right now, the average Russian collector has more rights than the average American collector does, which is a very scary thought when one thinks about it. Another important issue on this is that the same frame of mind says that it is the obligation of the American government to enforce the laws passed by foreign governments. And my opinion, frankly, I, I consider it to be an educated opinion, but it makes me sound perhaps a little radical, is that this is an opening wedge for issues that as Americans we really do need to be concerned about. You know, because a law is passed in Italy, or in China, does that mean that our government really should be in the enforcing of that? It may start with a rare coin, but what if, when it becomes an issue of free speech? Um, this is very thin ice that we're on. Yeah. So. Mr. Corver, um, the petition that was sent out on the German law, it, what impact will that have if many of our collectors, any members, hobbyists sign that? Will it have an impact? So the same as with the resolution from the board. Same. Okay. You know, I will simply tell you that we've had board directors and members come and speak in Washington, and we've had prepared statements, and they are put in binders and issued. And I know that this board reads every document that it gets in every binder. <laughs> um, when you have, even if you have 12 inches high of pro statements and one inch of con statements, when your mental concept has already decided 
that we are against collectors, you really don't need to read the 12 inches. You read the one inch for some, maybe you get some new ideas about better arguments. But still essential, and I speak bluntly, it is my nature, and I come from Texas, so I can't help it. <laughs> one of the reasons that I resigned from the committee, even though it meant that the dealer community, and I was literally representing the dealer community, not just in coins, but in all antiquities, it's important to have a voice on the committee. But once the committee, or in this case the bureaucrats, because it was really the bureaucrats making these decisions and not the committee, once the bureaucrats decided that they were going to do what they wanted to do and had the committee rubber stamp it, then if I'm there, then I am implicitly agreeing to their actions and they can say, well, you may not be happy with what we did, but you had a representative on the board who was there to um, give us your input. And that's, you know, again, it's necessary to have the input, but you can't allow it to be used as a justification for their actions. It's very careful activity. And again, uh, you know, essential that you support Germany. Um, if any of you are familiar with Peter Tompa, he is the most educated um, and informed person on these issues in the country. I will say that, although three of my friends will disagree immediately, uh, with great respect toward Peter. Um, right now, there is uh, legislation before our Congress to greatly expand the powers of these bureaucrats to make illegal importation of various items and also to make illegal the holding of them, ultimately. And while in theory this, none of this was supposed to be criminal, this was supposed to be more of a uh, paperwork issue to have customs stop things at Mr. the Cooper, we're going to have to cut you off for time. So yeah, please. No, but we have worked with Mr. Tomko on a number of issues. Right. The board has issued resolutions, and I know a number of our members that collect ancients, too, have issued that as well. You brought some points up here in this board and the new board, which is here as well certainly will address these as well. So either, you know, just for time's sake, I have to wind up the other audience. But thank you for sharing your concerns. This is great. Spelling this last time. K-O-R-B-E-R. Is there anyone in the audience that wishes to speak to this as well? Anyone else? Yes, Mr. Fever, would you? Bill, come up here, please. Bill, come up here. Can't hear you back there. I'm deep. <laughs> I'd like to ask the gentleman who's just up here, who's obviously very, very knowledgeable in this arena, if he feels there's anything the ANA and or ICTA could do further than what they're doing to uh, help this problem. Right now, I'd say the most important thing is to stay informed about every issue and to make your voice heard in support or in opposition to every issue. But ultimately, what you really have to do is mobilize your membership to write to their representatives in Washington. Because the uh, only people who can really stop the process of the bureaucrats is the Congress of the United States. And that's where the battle has to be ultimately fought. Vote the rascals out. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Anyone else wish to before the... Any additional discussion from the board on this matter before we take a look at possible adoption of this resolution? You know it's necessary. Will it have an impact? We need to make some kind of statement anything, as Jeff and as Mr. Kruger has pointed out. Any further discussion? So at this point, I'm going to call for the question. I have a motion by Governor Ridinghouse, second by Governor Lyon, that the ANA Board of Governors go on record in resolution to support the reasonable collecting, as defined by Ursula Kampmann, in her work with the Federal Numismatic Commission in Germany. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Abstentions? Motion is carried, one absent. Very important for you to know that as of this point, 
as I leave office, we don't have any litigation. But Holly, our legal counsel, Holly Whelan, a very quick update. Well, I am pleased to report that there is not much to report. <laughs> so these days, my role is limited to reviewing some contracts and offering some guidance on potential uh, revisions to the bylaws, mediation process, and handbook, and to just ensuring compliance with general um, laws. Uh, we are, as is always ongoing, looking at any potential revisions to the bylaws, um, the mediation policies, and the handbook. But other than that, I'm not doing much. So. <laughs> Are there any questions I want to put on the spot from the audience of legal? <laughs> Holly, you're off the hot seat. Thank you very much. Kim Kitt, you want to give us a, a, a brief update as executive director? Yes, yes. Um, as Jeff Swindley, Governor Swindley, was stating, um, the a and is excited to present its first ever YN online auction at 10 a.m. Mountain Time on September 19th. There are 100 lots available to view on the ANA's Pinterest page or by downloading the auction catalog at money.org. And I brought copies to distribute for everyone to see the catalog. It's, it's, it's a wonderful product that was produced by the staff. Um, YNs are encouraged to submit their YN dollar claims, that's the way they earn their YN dollars, before Monday, September 7th in order to receive their wine dollars in time to bid at this special event. Another first for the ANA and money.org is the release of an expanded article entitled Die Press Wooden Metals and Plaques of the 1876 Centennial Exposition. This was authored by Donald Tritt. The article's layout was designed by Ben Scott and Creative Services and contains photography by Robert Kelly, ANA photographer. Their talent and extra effort to bring this project to completion is greatly appreciated. So this will be the first time we've had an extended version of a article in the numismatist place like an e-book online. Mm. So it's pretty impressive. Um, update on the strategic plan. Uh, we have recently updated our progress towards the 2014 and 15 strategic plan. Some of our significant achievements with the current Board of Governors include the launch of the new money.org, the implementation of new association management software. The new website is the platform for the ANA to share valuable numismatic educational content and is the single most valuable tool we have to continue our outreach. I can assure you that we will hear more about plans for the website and content in months to come. The 2015 and 16 strategic plan drafted by ANA leadership coach Steve Kirkpatrick with the input of President Walt Ostermecki and the ANA leadership team will be submitted to the Board of Governors for consideration and approval in October. After its approval, we will share it with the membership on money.org. And on a personal note, it has been my pleasure to work with ANA President Walt Ostermecki and the 2013 and 2015 Board of Governors. This board has seen our association through challenges and supported much needed upgrades to our infrastructure as we move the association forward. I am enthusiastic about our new board, in the audience there, and the, the continuity of leadership that it presents with six of our current governors staying on. Um, our three new governors, soon to take office, are also accomplished individuals and offer their experience in the numismatic community to benefit, to the benefit of the association and its membership. I feel honored to serve as executive director during this exciting time and assure you that we have plans for the success of the ANA mm -hmm. so that we can continue to fulfill our educational mission and enjoy our beloved hobby. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Well, our part is done here business-wise, but I want to open it up as we have a custom to do to a town hall and forum. If there are anyone in the audience that would like to address us on other issues or concerns, now would be the time to do so. I will invite you to come to the microphone. You will have three minutes. 
Uh, there, is there anyone who wishes to ask questions? Any questions of Kim? Mr. Cooper? Three minutes, sir, please. Three minutes. I know it's hard. <laughs> uh, realistically, this is more for the new board, for Kim and for Jeff, but I'll bring it up. Uh, like much of the membership were aware of the digitization of the numismatists, are there plans to digitize the rare books in the library? In which case, I would recommend that we move forward with this as a member benefit, a member only benefit, and not just that digitization, but also the rare books held by dealers and collectors. Uh, it's a way to further disseminate, uh, it's the diffusion of knowledge, it's important, and it's one more reason why people should join the organization, uh, and it is the wave of the future. So I'd recommend that if we're not looking into it, that we do so. Uh, Mr. Corver, um, I went to the uh, Newman Numismatic Portal meeting uh, where he's invested several million dollars in that project, and I haven't discussed it with my board, but with that type of money being invested in their digitization of many books, periodical, auction catalogs, mm -hmm. I think we have a way to work together with them and we could then have one of the largest digitalization, you know, digitalized uh, numismatic periodicals books. Our rare books, we have talked about that. It, there would be an expense, so that would be one of the objectives presented to President-elect Garrett. Um, he has a method that he will select three or four items to focus on and then we'll evaluate what the resources needed would be and go forward. But I was very interested in the uh, at MP yesterday and the amount of time. It's going to take them even four years just to get it in operation. It's a huge yeah. um, Just in speaking with several dealers about this as a concept, yes. uh, they were actually fairly excited about the idea of spending money in exchange for an ad to be attached to a particular book copy. Because, in essence, it's an ad in perpetuity on the web. Correct. And if it's a book in your area of expertise or whatever, it's a, it's a natural kind of an advertising medium and that no one can object to if you can get a free copy of a book. Uh, a, a, one of the great classic references online, you know, a one-page ad is not going to tell you from downloading it. Uh, the other thing I would just mention in recommending this as a concept, um, a positive negative, if you will, if we have it, it means the members can come to us and we can maintain their privacy, which will increasingly be an issue if they have to go to Google for these, for these downloads. And I think that's actually an important uh, consideration. Thank you, Mr. Burke. Anyone else wish to? Mr. Harper, press, no questions? You're questioning me all year, now you're giving up, huh? Anyone else in the audience, anything? Given no questions from the audience, we've got them. That's the last order of business. But I also want to personally thank each and every board member, committee member, for their support of this organization. I know you give away uh, a lot of time. And I know your hearts are in the right place when it comes to this organization. And I thank you for your service, input, commitment to this organization remaining the Premier Numismatic Association in the future. And I believe this board has really worked hard. You know, one final kudos for you and for the audience as well. From what I understand, and if I misquote it, uh, you can kick me later, but this board has received more in donations and financial sponsorships, somewhere around the $563,000 during the past two years than I believe any previous board. And so you guys have all worked hard to make this happen through sponsorships, and I am deeply grateful. I know Kim is because it helps us advance our educational mandate. And I thank each one for your continued support. If you're on or if you should be dropping off, we do appreciate it. And I hope Jeff will echo that. I, I know we've done some great things that were kicked down the line through a number of boards that this board really tackled. We cleared the plate of a lot of things that were developed and been sitting and sitting for years. And so I want to pat each one of you sincerely on the back for all your hard work and dedication. 
during these past two years. With that, I have one other pleasure, and then we will adjourn. But it is the custom, and Kim, if you will join me, to recognize Sam Lynch. You didn't have much to say today, uh, in the day wise But when I took over, and I, I know Jeff, uh, President-elect Garrett is going to consider or continue the process of having a youth or youthful intern on the board. I don't know how he's going to handle it, but I've used the process during the past two years of four individuals, giving them an opportunity to gain leadership knowledge, but to have input in the association. And besides, it makes us all look younger, doesn't it, guys? Come on. Brings the average down. Yeah, <laughs> it, makes, it makes us look younger, isn't it? <laughs> But having a wife intern there has been great. Cole Shenowick was the first, Katie Reinders was the second, and uh, Hannah, Hannah Powell was, thank you, I, I, my mind is gone. Hannah Powell was the third, and Sam Ernst was the last. But these folks have been there at every open session, whether it's teleconference or in person. And they helped us gain, I think, in many cases, a different perspective. And Sam, if you'll join Kim and I here, we have a small token of our appreciation for your service, for your input, for your time. I know we spend a lot in college. This is an addition, but thank you. <laughs> Senile. I just want to acknowledge Walt's excellent job at uh, making sure these meetings uh, run efficiently. He does a, he's a real stickler for detail that's, uh, that, uh, you know, some other people that uh, may or may not be as good at that, and that obviously uh, leads to fantastic results. And I just want to give a hand for uh, Walt's uh, hard work the last couple of years. stay around and talk. Some of us will still be here. This way I can get the dealers on the floor and they can make some extra money. I'll make them happen. Donate. So thank you very much. To those in the Oh, I'll say for those. I'll say for those. I only broke the first one. So. But with that, thank you for the audience that's watching my live broadcast. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you so much. Thank you.